Have you ever wondered which thermal paste is the best? Will one work and the other don't? Well, we are here today to test several of these on both Intel and AMD CPUs, but I also used some of them on a GPU. Results are, well, all over the place. Word from a sponsor and let's dive into it. Looking for affordable Windows or Office keys? Look no further, I got you covered. Head over to scdkey.com, pick your Windows edition, use my discount code LE25 to get a 25% on any Windows or Office products. Once you complete your order, after a few seconds you will receive your code. In Windows, go to settings, there should be an activate Windows prompt at the bottom, click that, enter your code and wait for Windows to finish activation. To check the activation status, use the command prompt with a command slmgr.vbs slash xpr and you should receive a notification that the machine is permanently activated. Once again, use code LE25 at scdkey.com. So what I have here are several thermal compounds by Arctic, Gallid and Noctua. I know that there are some more high-end compounds out there like Thermal Grizzly and such, but let's focus on these because these here are in that more affordable category, but they are great thermal compounds. I did tests on both AMD Ryzen 5 7600X and 7950X, but also on this Intel 12900K, but let me tell you something, because AMD is completely different with temperatures, I mean temperature readouts, now I excluded those settings. I have the 7600X here, I used it to test some of these thermal pastes, but for the sake of the tests, I will exclude AMD CPUs from it because they operate totally differently now than they did before. They go after the max temp, which is around 95 degrees, and they will just stay there all the time and push the max clock if thermals allow. Even if they do not, they will just lower the clock and so on, so basically they are not good for measuring how pastes are behaving. Thus, i9 12900K will be used here as one of the hottest on the market, besides the latest 3900K. So for the test, I use the same board, this is the MSI z 694 Wi-Fi with i9 12900K and for the cooling I use this Gallid Liquid 360 AIO. Everything was performed on an open test bench here, so we can eliminate surrounding fans, case airflow and such. This is just the bare AIO and CPU and of course all the pastes. So my usual barrage of tests includes running 10 minutes of Cinebench R23 multi-core, let it cool for 15 minutes, then run Ada64 for about 30 minutes. Both of these tests will max out your CPU and this will be pretty much the worst case scenario. I did also run several gaming tests, this was done in Lancool 216 case, so you can see how all of these pastes behave while your CPU is under medium or mixed load. For Intel CPUs, I would advise you to use the line method for spreading the paste, you can also spread it with the spatula, but do not use the piece size on Intel CPUs, for AMD piece size works the best, something between P and the rice size. So first up, Arctic MX4, this is the most widely used thermal compound and it is for a reason, great price and it's been on the market for a while. So specs of this paste are 2.50 grams per centimeter cube density, viscosity of 870 poise, I hope I did not butcher this word, this is the unit used for the viscosity. So temps with this one running Cinebench R23 maxed around 92 degrees, considering that this CPU is crazy hot and will reach 100 degrees and throttle while literally air cooled and some AIOs on the market can't cool it, I would say it's doing a pretty decent job in this day and age. Running Ada64 saw a max of 88 degrees once it passed some 50 minute mark and pretty much kept that temps reaching my 30 minute mark. Gaming with this paste saw some average of 55 degrees. Moving to the MX5 paste, this one is discontinued by the way because there were some bad batches that would harden prematurely, my batch is mostly okay I guess, so I did include it here. This one has a density of 3.2 grams per centimeter cubed and viscosity of 55, 55, 550 poise. Also this paste is rather watery to say so compared to the MX4, so beware as it can literally drip from your CPU if you put it on the CPU while the case is in the upright position. Oh and the color of this one is some blue greenish mix, <laughs> it resembles the toothpaste. So Cinebench R23 max temps 90 degrees, Ada64 max temp of 86 degrees, it's of course better than the MX4 which is to be expected. 
gaming average was similar around 52 or 53 degrees it was hovering in that zone. So moving to the MX-6 now, this is the latest and greatest from Arctic, basically it's replacing bad batches of MX-5. This one is a traditional grey color, so they did replace ingredients, I guess. Density is 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed, viscosity is 450 poise and I feel that it's more dense compared to the MX-5 and MX-4 too. The Cinebench R23 test showed slightly better results than MX-5 did, maxing out at 89 degrees, and the ADA64 it maxed out at 85 degrees. So far, so good. Gaming average was literally the same as with MX-5 being constantly in the lower 50s. So moving to the Noctua NTH1 thermal compound, 2.49 grams per centimeter cube density with no info on viscosity, gray color, fairly easy to apply. Cinebench R23 10 minute tests gave me max temps of 91 degrees while Ada64 gave me 87 degrees. So this one sits between MX4 and MX5. Gaming on average was around 55 degrees. The NTH2 seems to be a successor to the NTH1 with a density of 2.81 grams per centimeter cubed. Again, no info on viscosity. It's looking slightly pale gray than the NTH1, but it did perform slightly better. And that slightly is again super close. The Cinebench R23 maxed out at 90 degrees, while Ada64 maxed out at 87 degrees. The gaming on average saw some 55 degrees. So moving to the Gallit GC Extreme, density of 3.73 grams per centimeter cubed and viscosity of 850 poise. This one is super dense and if you want to spread it more evenly, you will need to use a spatula and then it comes with it. Alright, the Cinebench R23 10 minute tests gave me pretty much similar temps as Arctic MX-5, maxing out at 91 degrees mark and Ada64 maxed out at 86 degrees. Gaming was around 53 degrees most of the time. Also, this one is the hardest of all to wipe later as it is so dense, but this is actually good for some other applications and I will explain later what I mean by that. So now we come to the latest GC4 thermal compound by Gallid, density of 2.3 grams per centimeter cubed and viscosity of 1000 poise. Classic grey color, it's fairly easy to spread around, quite similar to the MX6 feel actually, but oh boy wait a minute, there is something good in this paste. Cinebench R23 maxed out at 88 degrees, slightly better than MX6, but it's a win nonetheless. And Ada64 maxed out at 79 degrees. Gaming on average saw the 50 degree mark, never going more than that. I did mention some other applications and by that I mean the GPU. I used RTX 3090 and it's insanely hot and this is what I found so far running 3 runs of 3 Mark time spy tests and these were the max temps achieved. So MX4 maxing the GPU core at 80 degrees, MX5 maxing out at 79 degrees, the MX6 totally surprised me with 82 degrees, double check this and I was surprised to see this behavior. I don't know why it's denser than MX5, it's denser than MX4, but somehow it did not like the GPU direct die cooling, but it did great with CPU cooling. Both thermal pastes from Noctua actually perform really well with GPUs, maybe it has to do with its thickness maxing the core at 77 degrees and this was my go-to paste for the GPUs for a long time. The GC Extreme here did slightly... this GC4. So GC Extreme here did slightly better than MX5 maxing the core at 78 degrees but GC4 here totally surprised me maxing the GPU at only 72 degrees. I double check this completely tore the GPU apart, reapply the paste 73 degrees time, so we can call that a marginal error, but this is not a marginal win, this is an epic win for GPU cooling. I am so eager to see what it can do with a custom water cooling loop, but I honestly did not have time to do it now. Even though this took me way longer than I expected. Oh, and by the way, I included some undervolting results with this CPU also. Just doing the 0.1 undervolt can significantly lower your temperatures. And for the fun of it, I used the stock thermal compounds that you get with some coolers. And oh boy, that's a real mess. 100 degrees literally after seconds of firing the Ada64 test. So, you know which paste to use now. This or this and you're golden. 
So for the longest time I've been using the MX4, this was my go-to paste, it's safe to say that it will remain the best all-rounder in my eyes, totally versatile, but with new CPUs and new GPUs we actually need some better solutions. I like what Gallet did here with GC4, I did not expect these results compared to the MX6, I thought it would do worse or at least the same, but it managed to surpass it and by a great margin for GPU cooling. So my recommendation again especially for the GPUs would be the GC4 by Gallet, also for the latest CPUs if you want the best performance out there, GC4. After that I would recommend the MX6, it's also great paste, slightly cheaper, GC Extreme is also great, especially for GPUs, but just beware as it's hard to take off, especially with GPUs, so I would advise you not just with this paste, but all of them to heat your components prior to taking the coolers off, this way it all comes off easily. Hope you like this video guys, sub to the channel, like and share the video and if you have any questions put them down there, see ya in the next one.